come here, get off. Hey y'all, so welcome to this week's episode of The Turn On. Today we are reading... Quarantine. Quarantine. (laughs) A collection of shorts. I mean, I knew it was quarantine, but I I needed the rest of it. Quarantine, a selection of shorts written by Sabrina B. Scales in 2020. So sit back, relax, get your wine, your weed, whatever you need and enjoy. Quarantined, a collection of shorts by Sabrina B. Scales. If Dick was a slice of pressed ham, then Jabari's was a meat market jumping under those joggers like a caged animal as he deposited me on his bed and dragged his eyes from the tips of my toes to the top of my bonnet. I wanted to smile. I wanted to cry. I wanted to call my mama and tell her where I left my pre-written eulogy just in case the summer sausage I was drooling over took me out with my full permission. I had never experienced terror and want so intensely at the same time. My heart was beating like the TSU drumline and my pussy had taken up the English language. Oh, we about to get fucked fucked, she celebrated as Jabari pulled his t-shirt off over his head and threw it across the room. Make sure this nigga got a condom. That dick is definitely gonna reach the fallopian tubes. She warned as he pushed his joggers down and off, leaving nothing to the imagination behind those deep gray boxer briefs. You think I'd never been in a man's bed before the way I was lying there, hanging on his every move, void of words or even instinct to tell me to sit up or take off my clothes or crawl toward him and pry the dick from his cotton prison. None of that could possibly feel better than watching this show that Jabari was putting on teasing me in a way that only he could bring into fruition an exhibition that had been 26 years in the making. With the silhouette of his dick laying long and crooked against the inside of his thigh, he approached the foot of his platform bed with no footboard there to block his entry. Those stoned eyes melted me even further into the mattress as he planted his palms on the ice-white comforter and began his ascension into this forever sacred space where I lay like a damsel in distress. I tingled inside. Every inch of me did. And those butterflies that I cursed to hell earlier, they were still alive and well, acting as internal audience members. My feet were the first thing he touched, taking each of them into his big hands and massaging them one by one as if it had been all he meant or wanted to do. I didn't even bother hiding the fact that that shit felt good and likely couldn't because he was in my head and could probably feel me about to come to the tips of my curling toes. My calves were next, accepting the warmth and strength of his palm as he rubbed up their length before bathing the back of them with his tongue. Flames were firing off in my belly and chest and I legitimately feared I might spontaneously combust. But then my thighs. God... He parted my thighs like the Red Sea, nibbling at the soft flesh on the inside, staring up at me like he wanted to witness my undoing. And he would. And soon, if he kept traveling north, because my pussy had just put out a mixtape and every song had Jabari's name in the title. I breathed a sigh of relief when he paused the thigh nibbling, then quickly felt the oxygen being pulled from my lungs when he pushed a long, thick finger under my shorts and panties between my slick folds binding the way to my opening without the need for directions my back left the bed as i arched against his palm mouth and legs flew wide open welcoming everything he brought i blinked and i shivered and i probably blacked out coming to to find his hands dragging my shorts and panties off pretty ass pussy this nigga was talking to my vagina even leaned in to kiss it in the same way he kissed my lips 
waving his head from side to side, making a mess on his beard. He pulled my clip between those soft lips and sucked it until it swelled. Fuck was the only word left in my memory bank. Well, and chit, I discovered when he sucked my pussy harder. I bucked against his face, lying there in nothing but a tank top, naked from the waist down, held captive by his mouth. You taste so fucking good, Nikki. He managed to breathe out a complete sentence, glancing up at the mess that I'd quickly become before he buried his face back between my legs. I knew you would. He didn't bother lifting his head this time, sending his words down the narrow flow of my sex where they rightfully belonged. Feeling the familiar arrival of Climax rearing his head, I palmed the back of Jabari's head like a basketball, sinking my fingers into his short, kinky locks. Rolling my hips up and down the spread of his lips, I bathed his handsome face with my nectar, bucking into him harder and faster until there was nothing left but fragments of me shattering all over his mouth without a single solitary complaint. y'all so thank you Cameria for that lovely rendition I'm just going I'm committed to calling each um each time you read an excerpt a rendition just a lovely so you know, rendition I was like oh we doing that again okay yeah mm-hmm. okay so thank you for that rendition of quarantine okay so here's the thing this is what this book is about so it's a collection of shorts it's like three short stories which I actually really enjoy because you know me and my you know inability to stick to anything so it's three short stories and it starts with this this guy and this chick they live in the same building and then in the in the in their story she mentions his brother then the next story is about his brother and then i mean her brother and then the next story is about somebody else in the third story so it just kind of all links but they're three stories and it's all about quarantine it's like what we've been going what we went through Right, it actually really was some of us are still going through, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Uh, Booster, booster, yeah, that's me. (laughs) I was out before the booster, but anyway, so, um, this so this was like really flashbacky, it like really got me, it reminded me of like how it put me back in the feelings that I felt like in the middle of quarantine, not knowing what the fuck was happening what was going on, toilet paper supplies going crazy. So that was really interesting. So premise of the story, this chick, she lives in the same apartment building as her brother and his best friend. And her brother is on a vacation with some chick in their story. We later find out they're stuck there. And this chick uh, and her brother's best friend is in the house stuck quarantined. Her brother's best friend is a DJ, kind of like D-Nice, right? He's basically D-Nice, yeah. Yeah, he's basically D-Nice. And she, there's been some kind of, I'm looking at you, you looking at me things going on. And this story, quarantine happens and hijinks ensue, dot, dot, dot. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Okay, so... First, the book is really well written. Mm -hmm. Like, I felt like I was listening to my homegirl tell me a story, right? Like, at some point, she was like, oh, we about to get fucked, fucked. And I was like, oh, this is some shit. Like, I felt like my homegirl was in the middle of telling me, like, girl, let me tell you what the fuck went down. So it was really good in that sense that, like, And then also, like, there was a scene, like, where she went to his house to drop off some stuff, and he had lettuce, and she was like, yeah, he got that bougie lettuce in a plastic thing that, you know, he bought normally, but the rest of us niggas was buying it once. We ran out of regular lettuce. And I was like, yo, like, I know the lettuce she's talking about, and I know the situations that she's talking about. You know, you go to the grocery store. Ain't need one thing, but they're out. So then you get like the bougie for no reason example of it. 
I mean, I, pr- I probably what I get is already the bougie reason, the bougie stuff, because we eat organic. <laughs> you would not have gotten that only because it is in a, <laughs> it's packaged in a way that you're like, oh my God, no, this is horrible for the environment. Mm. And I don't, I don't, maybe it is, maybe it is those lettuce. It's like the bib lettuce and maybe it is organic, but it kind of defeats the purpose because it's really, it's like in this plastic clamshell. So not, not like the clamshell salads, but this is just lettuce. That's like. It's a head of bib lettuce. It's got the mm-hmm. little things attached to the bottom. Mm-hmm. The but it's. Roots. Uh-huh. And it's like in a plastic clamshell. It's just, some, it's like. Oh, uh, okay. It just bougie for no reason. And she was like, this bougie <laughs> motherfucker and his lettuce. And I was like, yo, like, again, such great writing that just reminds me of like, here's the thing. I feel like sometimes when things are, um, when people try to get too familiar and too current events eat, like where they like dropping shit that like happened yesterday, the shit sounds weird. Kind of reminds of the guy in the movie last night that we were watching. Like... <laughs> I was just like, yeah, it if it, it rings false, it feels like you're trying too hard. Yeah, um, but this felt yeah. super organic, and it felt like we really did just drop down in the middle of their lives, and like this is how they speak, and it's the way that we speak. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. So, and then the Method Man comment. Did you? So she was sitting on the couch. She was like, she was like, um, you know, sitting on the couch. In the middle of pandemic with my hair bonnet on because god forbid we're the last people on earth and i gotta repopulate the the planet with method man like and that. he comments on my split it ends and i'm just like so black yet so true <laughs> i'm just like damn sabrina you like i really felt like i was just listening to my home girl shoot the shit so mm-hmm. love that okay so like i said this guy, his name is Jabari, but this nigga D nice. Like, it's just he's basically right? doing club quarantine. Yeah, yeah, he's he calls it club Jabari or something like that. Yeah, and it made me re- it like brought me back to like the first time I was like listening to D nice, like when he just started doing his thing. Did you did you do any of that? A couple of times, stuff? just I would dip in for a few minutes at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And so like, it was just, to me, it re- it really reminded me of like going back to that. It took me back to that place. Like, Ooh, D nice is doing this thing. Cause see, I was an early adopter. I was on before he even hit a hundred thousand. Like, I think the, the, the live that he hit a hundred thousand was like the third or fourth one I had listened to because before early on he kept getting kicked off at an hour. So then mm-hmm. he got kicked off yeah. and he had to start all over again. So mm-hmm. I was like, yo, this is just mm, it 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 was beautiful, you know? Like it, to me it was really dope that like everybody was sitting at home and you see like fucking Oprah and Gail in the chats along with like something I went to high school with you know it was just really like it felt good I felt like we were all like sitting at home drinking eating our body weight and cheese or bread or potatoes in your uh instance and just quarantining it up so it made me it made me happy um what were we gonna yeah. say um I think it's interesting and I think it speaks to the different places that you are and I are in that when you look at this, it's with nostalgia. Oh, and... no, nigga. No, 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 no. Well, I it sounds like of, it. It sounds I like I find it. bits of joy in it. I find bits of joy <laughs> in it because actually I was out there and my brother was watching uh, quarantine. He was watching Tiger King and <laughs> seeing that brought me back to a very specific place. I was sitting out there on the couch working because I was still trying to figure out where I was going to be working. I was like in the like throes of chemo. And I remember like there are certain things that just like remind me of like 
the really shitty aspects of quarantine. Tiger King, Black AF, isn't that the Kenya Barris Netflix show? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I didn't watch it. Yeah. That. So like there are there were very like shitty, shitty parts of quarantine. There still are very shitty parts of quarantine. But I tried to highlight the more this was lovely parts mm-hmm. of it all. Like our happy hours. Remember we were doing our happy hours weekly? Yeah. That was a long time ago, it feels like. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so those, you know, like I not to say that this shit ain't been, you know, difficult on you, because nigga I see. But, you know, I think I just choose to like hold on to the good bits and look at the the good shit that came as opposed to, you know, looking at quarantine as a dark cloud. Okay. <laughs> I just I guess because I don't know. It, I'm just still very, very much in it. Like nothing has materially changed um, except for that in the beginning, it felt like we were all in it together. And now it's like when you see those tweets where people are like, who else is still social distancing and wearing their masks everywhere? And you know what I mean? Can you please like this and retweet it so that I know that it's not just me? Like that's how I that's feel, how feel all the time. Yeah. So it doesn't, um, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't feel like a look back. It felt like <laughs> this is yesterday, except for that everybody is not doing it too. And I, I, but I do remember, um, how it felt when everybody was doing it and it felt like everybody was taking everything really seriously and like everybody was you know because that was back before we knew how long it was going to be that was when it was like two weeks school be closed for two weeks everybody stay in the house for two weeks never in any way and maybe that's why i was like i i never thought it was going to be two weeks from the beginning i was like we like this till spring now when spring 2021 came around and we wasn't i was like okay nigga but like i (laughs) I, yeah. I remember like, that's what they were saying. America. Like when school closed, they were we, like, we send them home for two weeks. And yeah, no, I don't know that I ever really believed it was going to be two weeks. But I remember that there was like this optimism because that's what we were being told that it was just going to be a quick shut it down. And then we out here again. And I think that the part of this that that resonated with me or the part that I um, that stuck out to me was like, oh, right. This was during that time before we knew shit. <laughs> before we yeah. thought it was just going to be like, ooh, okay. Everybody in the house is peaceful. The streets are quiet. Everybody's taking walks. We waving at each other. This is dope. Before we realized that that wasn't going to be it. <laughs> like now, oh, that light at the end of the tunnel? No, nah, that was just yeah. a fucking nightlight. Somebody left yeah. down here. It was before cats start shit. arguing about masking and yeah. the hotel started telling us that they was going to try to track us with a vaccine. You know, it was simpler times. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think that's the nostalgia that I feel <laughs> about it. When you say, I look, yeah, like, because I, again, I knew from the very beginning that this shit was not going to be a two week thing. I was mm. like, it take us two weeks to fucking like pick our color underwear or something. Like I just, it, yeah, I never, I did not. Cause I was like, we ain't going nowhere till there's a vaccine and they ain't doing no vaccine in two weeks. Mm. So, and we just now get into, you know, kids having it, but okay. Um, so D nice parties were my, I remember we did our, what brings you joy, um, uh, series as mm. a, a uh, thing mm-hmm. and yeah I think did I say D-Nice? I think I said Auntie Music I don't remember probably yeah. it was probably Auntie Music because that's all it the time yeah. exactly um, but yeah so D-Nice Club Quarantine certainly got me through it okay so um, 
Jabari was D nice, but not really because this nigga also had a job. Like he yeah. started a virtual assistant business um, to kind of pay for his doing the shit he wants to. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I don't even want to do that shit. But, you know, he had to. Um, and I remember at one point, so when I was like at the height, at the beginning of quarantine, I was doing chemo and like had fucked up sleep schedule. Like mm-hmm. I would That's call them you night up naps. in the middle of the night. All the, yeah. yeah. I would call them night naps. Cause I would like go to bed at like 11 and then be up by like 1230 and be like, well, mm. I'm up. So on a night nap, I was watching this show on Fuse and it was like T-Pain school of hustle or some shit like that. Mm. And it was an old episode, but it was this guy talking about how he built this virtual reality concert thing so everybody Hmm. could put on their VR headsets and, you know, watch a concert. And I was like, yo, that's cool. this nigga was ahead of his time. Yeah. And I mean, like, and they've actually used it, actually, I think, in a sick twist of fate. I think Travis Scott was one of the first artists to do, like, a Uh. show. Yeah. Should've um stayed with that shit. Exactly. Um, but um it made me think about how Jabari he had a virtual assistant business. And mm-hmm. I was just like, yo, like people like that that did that shit was like really ahead of the time and probably knew I mean like I don't even think they knew what the fuck they well, some people might have. But you know, like Zoom. I used to joke and say like Zoom sponsored the fucking pandemic like mm. them niggas knew what the fuck they was doing at work we were preparing for you know virtual stuff and so it wasn't as di- well it was, it was horrible at my job but we kind of had our minds on like being able to help people you know mm-hmm. work virtually and it's just like yo some people really hit a lick in the pandemic I have uh, people that I talk to um, that do like sex adjacent stuff, like, you know, selling toys and shit like that. And they was like, yo, niggas was fucking during pandemic because I was <laughs> making money like hmm. crazy. So I was just like, you know, again, pandemic sucked. But at the same time, I think there was some uh, growth that came out of it. Some, like I said, some people hit a lick. You know? Uh, yeah. I, I I think I'm having trouble with that language. What do you mean? Um, Was? No, no, no. With, with the... I guess maybe hit a lick is accurate. I guess I, it's like I'm having trouble with the juxtaposition of um, folks essentially profiting off of the pandemic, right? Um, but just because I'm having trouble with it doesn't mean it's not true. <laughs> yeah, I'm just having true. sort of like situating that alongside like... Niggas dying. Exactly. Yeah, no, and specific, I mean... Like, and like niggas specifically too, right? This like, comes yeah. from someone who lost someone very close mm-hmm. to her at the yeah. very beginning of the pandemic. But I also am of the, uh, I'm of the thought where it's like, if we're going to go through this horrible shit, let something good come from it, you know? Um, and I don't, and it's, it'd be different if it was like, niggas was upselling, reselling toilet paper. That kind of shit, nigga, you tripping. They you know? probably was. <laughs> they probably were. I ain't just, look, remember Amazon and the, the wipes and shit. Um, or like, you know, reselling wipes and hand sanitizer. That, mm, not so much. But I do think it's really cool that like some people were building businesses that were based to support a virtual, a more virtual world, a more virtual economy. And it enabled us to, you know, still connect and be around each other. And they made some money off of it, you know? To me, there's a difference, there's a difference between making money off of it and, like, exploiting or, you know, 
taking advantage of people in the hmm. midst of this. So I guess that's why I'm like, eh, you know, niggas was fucking. That's a great thing. Maybe somebody mm-hmm. was getting some good sex. Some people were not and realized that they hate their fucking partners, which I think is what happened in the second story in this mm. book, right? No, they didn't realize they hated each other. It just made them think about their relationship, like forced them to evaluate what they really wanted it to be. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, I, I'm with you in, in on the innovation aspect of it. Um, that's it yeah as opposed to like the capitalism aspect of it like yeah like folks were forced to innovate like even like you you mentioned earlier that wendy nice first started like doing the club quarantine and he kept getting cut off like after an hour and i think like stuff like that and verses like forced like ig to change the way that it handled large you know like People mm-hmm. with large um, followings and bring how how they configured their platform to be able to bring more people together like that was pretty dope, mm-hmm. and it forced companies to be able to have to be more accessible um, to their employees. It forced people who are throwing conferences and conventions to rethink the ways that they bring those things to people. And so, like, from an innovation and accessibility aspect of it, I think it's been fantastic. People being able to work from home in these companies where they swore up and down that you couldn't work from home. And now, all of a sudden, you're forced to. And, oh, shit, look at that. Y'all figured this shit out. Um, Of course, the challenge, right, is for people to keep that up. (laughs) To keep having conferences be accessible so that folks who aren't able to be there physically can still participate. To keep making it an option for people to be able to work from home so they're not forced to come into offices where accessibility is an issue for them. To and, And even to just think about the fact that folks have responsibilities that are not just work. And if they can do their jobs from home without having to come into an office... Why prop up commercial real estate for the purpose? Mm-hmm. Like, that's why, right? Folks are making people come back into offices when folks can live their lives and do their jobs from home and still be wonderful employees and still serve the mission of the companies while also taking better care of themselves and the people who they love. Um, mm-hmm. I think for the companies and the organizations that embrace that and who are continuing to embrace that, ooh, and also telehealth. Like, the fact that that turned into a real, yeah, like, think about how much easier it got once you started being able to do your appointments. Like, nobody was offering that. Not really. Before the pandemic. They had all these fucking laws in the way, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, like, and so the innovation there. Shit. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like, I definitely see those as silver linings that have come out. I think the challenge is just for companies to keep doing it. Like, one of my doctors is transitioning back to in-person. Like now she's down to like just one day where you can do telehealth. And I'm like, I can't (laughs) like, so it's either I got to get myself together, right? Find a new, which is what I'm doing or drive all the way to fuck to where she is or wait weeks to be able to do virtual because everybody wants virtual, but she's only available one day a week that way now. Um, so it's like, damn, like, why can't y'all let's let's keep moving forward? Don't mm-hmm. say, oh, OK, uh, yeah. we think the world should open. Let's let's move backward again. Like cause so many folks benefited from the increase in accessibility that was caused by the pandemic. Yeah. 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 One of my doctors has now a person like a physician's assistant that is dedicated to telehealth. And I appreciate yes. that because yeah. I'm like, hey, girl. We're going to do this right here. Mm-hmm. And it's helped a lot, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I totally agree, particularly about the accessibility. Um, I follow this disability advocate on uh, activists, I'm sorry, disability activist on TikTok, Crutches and Spice. Mm-hmm. I love her. She's so spicy. <laughs> I see Mani, right? I don't even know her name. <laughs> No, it's crutches and spice. I think that's Imani Barbara. <clears throat> I love her ass because she yeah. always she has and she is spicy. <laughs> yeah, and she's got like really good takes on everything. It's not just disability. She has like dope ass takes on everything, but um, it's also dope. Like 
also dope that she's just, you know, disabled and being a bad bitch. She was um totally off topic. She was there was a TikTok with this black girl that was like, I took my company to the stock exchange. And she like stitched it. was like, wait, that's you. I love your clothes. I want to model for you. And now she does. And she did. Yeah, I saw those pictures and she I posted was like, them on Twitter. Yo, I fucking love this. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Um also I became a TikTok queen <laughs> during <quarantine>. You did. <laughs> okay, so enough of the gloom and doom of quarantine because mm, we was doing a lot of that so Jabari he you know sees Nikki they chatted up for a minute Nikki goes back to her room her I think hotels her apartment and she happens to find him. she happens to like go on IG he's going live so she you know pops in his room which now he told her he was going to be on and she was trying to avoid it on some but I don't need so it so here's the thing I think it was more one of those like you know how it's like so and so was going live and you accidentally hit him, you're like, fuck, I'm in a room with like two other people. <laughs> and I'm like, done hey, that. I click. <laughs> back out slowly. Yeah. I mean, back out slowly. Like, but yeah. So I like to think that's what happened. But <laughs> he sees her in there and he was like, I'm going to get her panties. I'm going to get her panties. How? I'm going to play a siren song. What is that siren song? Whitney he Whitney Hutton. <laughs> Whitney Hutton. Right. Yeah. Uh and so she, he starts playing Whitney Houston. What is it? Uh I wanna dance with somebody. Yeah, he started there. Yeah. But it was like a whole medley. Yeah, a whole Whitney yeah. hour or something. What's your like I cannot resist this artist? If I hear this song, if I hear this artist or song playing, I have to get up no matter where I am. I'm in a fucking grocery store. I'm at the doc well no, you dance in the grocery store. I'm at the doctor's office. Whatever. I hear this hands down. I gotta dance, sing along, something. Cash money taking over for the nine nine and two thousands. So on brand. <laughs> so on brand. Immediately. Immediately. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was Can't get around graduating it. from high school. And so like yeah. it not only is it a good song, but it's like It's got staying power. It was like a a part of like life. Yeah. Like, it was like it was He was talking music. to us. <laughs> yeah. He was like, take it over for the nine nine two thousand. Nigga, I'm graduating. Yeah. 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 Totally. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. What about you? Uh, <laughs> auntie music. <laughs> so I sing along to all auntie music wherever I am. Mm-hmm. I sing along. Uh, guaranteed to make me dance. Anything like No Limit, Southern, you know, like that kind of shit, like mm-hmm. cash money, like Project Bitch. <laughs> that shit come on. <laughs> Nigga, I am a Project Bitch. Um, yeah, shit like that. Did I tell you about my friend's experience with No Limit? No. What? So I came here to DC. <laughs> I hope I hope he don't get mad at me for telling this story. I'm not gonna don't say no that. names. They came to DC, but it's a very specific story. They came to DC to do a show, so he went to the show. A friend of his was cousins with like somebody in No Limit, right? So Mm -hmm. they all hook up after the show. He takes them niggas to stands and chopped up with them all night. Mm -hmm. Like every picture he has of that night, he's like this big ass (laughs) cheesy grin. (laughs) And I was like, yo, like that's awesome. Your that night was you like giving your 15, 16, 17 year old self like exactly a what gift, they needed. Right? Yeah. He was like, he was like, I he said, I looked Master P in the face and told him, nigga, I am a no limit soldier. <laughs> <laughs> Damn near 40. Told Master P, I'm a no limit soldier. And then he went to tell me how he was about to get no limit tattooed on his body. Thankfully, his mama told him not to. Oh shit. But yeah. 
Like it was like he was like, I paid for masterpiece drinks and wings at stands. And I was like, yo, that is a dope ass story. He was like, I told Master P, I know you don't need me to pay for this, but I'm a no limit soldier. <laughs> I am going to pay for my general's meal. Sad. I was like, yo. Like, <laughs> now the next day he was fucked up. He was like, maybe I am a limited soldier. <laughs> Because like, the way my bank account is set up. <laughs> the way his body was set up. He was like, nigga, I'm hurting. Oh, but yeah, shit. so um, I was just like, yo. I was like, that is just, that was dope. That's I was really like, cute. that is a gift to your inner child, right? Yeah. <laughs> and be like, like every picture, this nigga had a cheese ass grin on his face. I love okay. That. The sex scene in this story. Question. What'd you say? I said that was a really good question because now I'm thinking about other things. What makes me give me body? I'm gonna dance the entire time. I when I wrote the question, I was like something. She gonna say Beyonce? Yeah, give me body. I'm I'm like is swinging my sausages around. (laughs) We'll definitely make that happen. Get you moving. Also, there was a a very specific time, a couple of years, and I lived in New York. It was um, give it to me, and I still do that song for karaoke. <laughs> Jay Z, give it to me. That oh, sweet, I'm like that give nasty, it to me. that okay. gushy stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and that's I, the I got it, man. I, I <laughs> drunk loud on the table. I'm gonna sing it with the depths of my soul. So mm-hmm. yeah, I totally. Get I've it. danced in line um, waiting to get in the club, pissed that I didn't make it in before. Back when I used to stand in line. This song. <laughs> before the song came on yeah so um what's your karaoke song so you said give it to me give it to me as a go-to um i usually i typically rap i mean obviously i mean i can sing but i can rapping is hard. sing yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, but i do i usually i rap something that folks ain't heard for a while sometimes it's pop Sometimes no it's Jay. Ain't no fun is a crowd favorite. <laughs> so, uh, listeners, Karen and I definitely did Ain't No Fun at Trap Karaoke one year. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, that exists out there that somewhere exists in the out world. There in the ether. <laughs> we had a good ass time. What was it? 15,000 people? Something stupid. Not that many. How many people were there? I don't know. It was a lot of the people. Howard Theater. Yeah. And we had the whole crowd. It was really beautiful, actually fun times um there's something that i see you know a long time ago i used to do erica badu songs but i don't fuck with her no more so she's dropped by <laughs> the rotation and then you always like, on the wrong side of shit why are you always on the wrong side <laughs> and just it sucks because she like i don't know 10 years ago was my favorite singer like i i had at that point seen her perform more than anybody else and now it's beyonce but like I had to give her up because she always loud and fucking wrong and dangerous, quite honestly. So that's the end of that. Yeah, yeah. So I don't sing her songs anymore. That sucks. I can't remember the last thing I actually sang, but I know when we sang on my birthday, I'm pretty sure I sang something, but I don't know. What's your guilt to? Tevin Campbell. Can we talk? Mm-hmm. Uh, Rick James, Super Freak. <laughs> That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Howard Theater is uh, 1,200. A little bit more than 1,200. Okay. And I remember them. I remember. Okay. I, and I do remember them. So I know it was a 15 and I remember they saying 1,500. But that would have been a violation of fire code. So we'll say <laughs> it was 1,200 people. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. Um, that was fun. Okay. Now, let's get on to the sex of the matter. Because they had mm. really good sex in this. Mm-hmm. And, like, they had good sex. It was written really well. Kenria, I'm laughing at you 
even doing it because there was a lot of oh shit ah, ah, and you know how i feel about the yeah the interjections <laughs> just put you just put you go like record it like this so people can see you um, oh, don't look at me yeah so um they talked a lot and it was like yeah i talk in bed and i love being talked to because baby you want to see me be nasty oh someone posted on twitter on instagram today damn i can't i probably won't be able to find it it was like what's the nastiest thing you've heard or said during sex some of these people were like really like tame like it's like ooh, they put my foot in their mouth nigga that's level one for me everybody's got their thing i love nasty people so okay so the it's sexual essentials is the um person that posted it she's a um sex educator dope as fuck i like following her but i loved i was in this shit like first every other comment is somebody like posted up here for ideas um this bitch said this nigga told me he was gonna suck out my daily water intake ew no sound yes (laughs) love it uh lots of spit in my mouth oh, yeah. which <laughs> someone that hates kissing i know I, don't mind it. Ah! I know and i love kissing and even that is like ooh, okay i do it <laughs> not for me I'm like, <laughs> i do it I <laughs> which okay spelling the name of our future child with each stroke Okay. That was interesting. Uh, spit my mouth. Man. But also, you know, that whole. I remember, like, there, you know, people like, oh, we spell the alphabet. That's that's not consistent. I don't need a stroke that's moving all over the place. I need one. That's- <laughs> Again, it's like that, like, <laughs> pouring of water. Uh, oh, wow. She asked me to go under her pillow and grab her favorite toy. It's under the it's always under the right pillow. Do I know you? Because <laughs> that is me all the time. Uh yeah. It <laughs> one chick said, I have to send it to your DM. Uh yeah. This is that some of these are just mm-hmm. Mm-mm. I love <laughs> I love nasty. Come back to us. Look. (laughs) (laughs) This bitch is scrolling. (laughs) Anyway, yes. So I love being talked to. I love being. If you coach me through an orgasm, nigga, I'm out in front of your mama house. Why are you being weird to me? (laughs) I can't. It's just, yeah. it's just too, it's just too fucking lovely. I like talking too. It's just, it's fun. And it's, I don't know, it's that much more intimate. It's like, you know me well enough to know the right thing to say in this moment. That's not going to make me be like, oh, get up. Cause I've yeah. done that before. <laughs> that's oh, enough. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, that and, uh, I mean, yeah, I talk a lot. I don't think I've ever been with someone that was like, shut up. <laughs> I talk a lot, right? <laughs> and on one hand, I'd be like, nigga. But then uh, I was like, eh, I get it. Just <laughs> shut up. Be quiet. Um, I haven't, but I can think of some people where if I had opened that floodgate, I would have had to <laughs> work hard nigga, to close it. Stop. Shut up, nigga. Yeah, no. Yeah, I. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, it's been it's interesting because depending on the lover depends on like how what I like. I mean, not that mm. I have like a one size fit mm-hmm. all, but for some people, I'm very dominant, and I'm like, mm. this my dick. I mm-hmm. give lots of direction, lots yeah. of direction, which like, goes to that intimacy, right? Of it, right? Don't remember, no, outside of the bedroom, yeah. yeah. Like, mm. 
actually my 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 talk game is pretty <laughs> fucking good now that I'm thinking about it. That's what's up. I don't know yeah. what the mine is. It's okay. <clears throat> I'm really so, I wanna be talked to. So there's this chick, <laughs> Marla Stewart. She is the uh founder of her and someone else founded the Sex Down South Conference, but mm-hmm. she teaches a uh, sex uh, sex talk class, how to mm. sex talk. And it's actually really good because she's like, we're going to come up with some shit. We're going to say some shit. And I did it on Zoom. <laughs> so she's like, okay, what you got to say, Eric? I was like, okay, let me, because uh, she has like three levels. And so by the time we got to level three, I was like, okay, I got to turn off Zoom so y'all can't see me say what I the know, fuck I'd I be like, to say. in the chat. <laughs> uh, no, because she's like, she inflection. won't let you. Like, no, yeah. she's like, inflection. Maybe you need to say, put your emphasis on this or mm. drag out this word. I mean, it's a really good class. That's dope. I suggest y'all take it. But um, yeah, I love me some dirty talk. <laughs> and then you would have fit right in in this scene. Girl, I was like, mm, I was taking notes. Like, oh, oh, I'm gonna have to say some of this. <laughs> so yeah, it was it was a good fucking scene, particularly because of the talking. Mm. Um, but that's all I got. You got mm. anything? Uh, I think the only other thing is that one of the things, lots of things. Um, that I really loved about this book was th- that you mentioned at the very top was the interconnectedness of the story. Yeah. I really it appreciate like a, it. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. That's a chain being connected. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> it was nice. And I mean, kind of speaks to the interconnectedness of life and how none of us are really operating in silos, even when we feel like we are. Um, even in the middle of a fucking pandemic where we're yeah. all isolated, we're mm-hmm. not. Yeah, and I, I think she did a really good job of bringing that out. Yeah, yeah. So I, I I enjoyed it, and it's a, like you said, for those who like a quick read, and it is nice to sometimes just pop into a world and pop out. And yeah. this was nice to see three different parts. It was a, a very um, good example of world building in a mm-hmm. short amount of uh, a space. How she yep. dropped us in and showed it showed us the same world from three different perspectives or six different perspectives really. Um it was really cool. So Okie dokie. Yeah. Well that's all I've got. So we're gonna take a quick break and then we're gonna come back to our segment. What's turning us on? Da-da-da. Hey y'all. Today's a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world, or just think it'd be fun to have your own show like us, podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your reach online. And Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show gets put online and listed in all the major podcast directories like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, literally everything within minutes of finishing and uploading your recording. We use it here for the turn on and I can truly attest to the fact that it's pretty fucking dope. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners and the team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. So join over 100,000 podcasters like us who are already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Just click the link in our show notes and you'll be able to get your own account set up. And if you sign up for a paid plan, you'll get a $20 Amazon gift card and support our show. Let's create something great together. Sign up for Buzzsprout today. Hey, y'all. So we're back for what's turning us on, Killa. You have a cousin of another product. So in an earlier episode this season... We talked about this thing that I was hella late on that everybody else apparently was using. Well, bitches, I don't know if y'all late on this. You're probably not. I'm probably <laughs> also late on this. But it does. It has a cousin that's got this little thing on. He got a tail. He got a tail. So it's a little smaller than the original. But it's got this piece. And when we opened it, my partner, I had been saying it goes in your butt. Just why I got it. My partner was like, does it? So then the instructions are in Mandarin. So we had to like go online. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
pictures. Yeah, so looking for photos, it does indeed go in your butt. I was just trying to understand how this is, how this goes. Yeah, goes in your butt. <laughs> the whole thing? Uh-huh. But you can also. And does it go like this? Uh-huh. Turn it on. Let me see. Right, hopefully it's charged. Yeah. So the vibration is mainly, it's obviously powered here, but it's mm-hmm. meant to give you, if you like a full situation, mm-hmm. booty, um, that you can go on and put this up in there while you are using this on your, because it's a clip stimulator. Uh huh. So it's giving you a okay. couple of different types of stimulation at the same time. And yeah, it's meant for this piece to flutter just a little bit inside your body. Uh, it's very subtle. I can, I can feel it on my hand, but it's not it's not like a fucking butterfly wing or anything. Um, yeah. Okay. But you can also put it in your You in could your put it in your cooch as well. It just all depends on where you like. But make sure that you clean it very well in between moving it from place to place. Oh, yeah. We don't I think want I no just keep it dedicated for exactly. one or the other. So, but yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, you should be cleaning all your toys. Like, let's be yes. very clear. But uh, we'll put the link up for the cousin of Rose's yeah. cousin that came in from Saint Olaf. Saint Olaf. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, this was great. Thank you so much, Killa, for showing us your uh, rendition of the Rose. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, y'all, so it's your favorite ho-host, Erica Killer, two hoes making it clap. This episode was produced by us, Kenry and Erica, and edited by Ballistic. The theme music is from Brazy. Hit subscribe right now in your favorite podcast app and at youtube.com slash the turn on podcast so you'll never miss an episode. Then follow us on Twitter at the turn on pod and Instagram at the turn on podcast. And you can find links to books, transcripts, guest info, what's turning us on and other fun stuff at the turn on podcast.com. And don't forget to email us at the turn on podcast at gmail.com with your book recommendations and your pressing sex and related questions. And you can support the show by leaving us a five-star review, buying some merch or becoming a patron of the show. Just head to the turnonpodcast.com to make that happen. Thanks for listening and we'll see you soon. Holla.